This chapter 2 builds on your understanding of zero coupon rates and discount factors to teach you how to derive forward rates for each maturity. Our first step is therefore to define a forward interest rate. This is an interest rate quoted by a financial institution which, like any other interest rate, relates to a period with a defined tenor but starts in the future. Thus we might speak of the one year forward, one year zero coupon rate, and denote this by F1,2 and we would mean by this the one-year zero coupon rate for the time period starting one year from now and therefore ending two years from now. Deriving this forward rate involves the use of a no arbitrage type of argument similar to ones you may have seen used with foreign exchange, equity, or commodity forwards. This argument is best summarized via this diagram, which is based on the idea that F1, 2 appearing in the second half on the right of the diagram must be that single rate that would make one dollar invested first at the one year zero coupon rate of 526% and then reinvested along with its earnings from the first year at the forward rate F1,2 yield by the end of the two years exactly the same amount as if that dollar had been invested at the 11, 811% two year zero coupon rate appearing in the top half of the diagram. Based on the above, we are therefore able to write this equation here, confirming the pattern shown in the diagram and the no arbitrage argument, and this would give us the following solution for F1,2, namely 11.04% but perhaps a faster and more generally replicable solution is simply to rearrange the equation above as shown here in the left part of this rectangle which ultimately simplifies into what appears in the right part of the rectangle where the F term is combined with DF2 and to equal DF1 and therefore ultimately yielding a solution for F1,2 that is simply the ratio of DF1 divided by DF2 minus 1 and therefore equal to 11.04% once again. Let us generalize this a little further. First, as a matter of notation, we might use F 3,7 for example to refer to the zero coupon rate for the four year period careful starting three years from today and therefore ending seven years from today and most generally we might use the notation F a comma B to refer to the zero coupon interest rate for the period starting in A years from today and ending in B years from today and therefore which would last for a total of B minus A years. Note that under this notation B must always be greater than A. We now produce our diagram from before again using the no arbitrage argument with this time the Z B the Z A 
and the F A comma B replacing the items you saw in the previous version of this diagram. So this time, reflecting upon the diagram you just saw, we are able to write 1 plus ZB raised to the power B is 1 plus ZA raised to the power A times 1 plus the forward rate raised to the power B minus A for the remaining number of years of that period. And this can be rewritten simply in the following way. so that F A comma B ultimately simplifies a little bit as you saw before into the ratio of two discount factors but this time DF A divided by DF B raised to the power and this is new 1 over B minus A and finally as before minus 1 at the end so in a nutshell, any forward rate starting in any number of years and lasting for any other number of years can be calculated from two discount factors, specifically the one for when the forward period starts and the one for when the forward period ends. This worksheet, one year forwards, has programmed the formula you just saw in a new column and specifically in column H which looks pretty straightforward and therefore should raise no conceptual difficulties for you since we have done the hard work already Note please that here when we speak of one year forwards we are referring to the length of the forward period not to when it starts. This one year forward period may indeed start in one year as indicated in this row 9 and then we would use the notation shown in the cell I9 or it may start in two years and then we would use this notation F2 comma 3 and another one year forward period would start in three years and so on. For the sake of perfect clarity we should therefore speak of the one year forward one year rate or the two year forward one year rate or alternatively the one year forward three year rate or perhaps the three year forward five year rate or better still we would use the appropriate notation as indicated in this column to avoid all ambiguity. As you examine this worksheet you should note the following. First the reference to the forward rate in this cell I8 F0, 1 is really not to a forward rate at all but rather to the spot one year zero coupon rate which we had calculated previously to be 5.26 percent. Second, the location of the forward curve relative to the other two curves, namely the spot curve and the par curve, as we called it, is not easy to describe precisely. The forward curve certainly seems to lie above the other two curves, generally, except towards the very end when it actually drops below as you can see here the zero coupon curve. Furthermore the forward curve is initially upward sloping in fact quite steeply upward sloping but peaks in year five 
before becoming inverted and again quite steeply inverted. Lastly, the forward curve is visibly the one that is the least smooth and has the greatest number of kinks and abrupt changes in direction and steepness. This can be shown to be a direct mathematical consequence of the very notion of what a forward rate is and of how we derive it from the zero coupon rates. The graph appearing immediately to the right of the table in this worksheet summarizes everything we have learned so far and should raise no surprises. Note once again the especially kinky, abruptly changing shape of the forward curve being the one in green with the triangular spots on it. we do not need to restrict ourselves to one year forwards as you may have realized already suppose I want to calculate all two year forwards from the discount factors I already have for example the two year forward starting in one year This two-year forward starting in one year, of course, would be denoted, as shown on this new worksheet, two-year forwards, by the term F1,3 appearing in this cell J10. We have adjusted our generalized formula for use in this worksheet which is now programmed in column I as well as in the preceding column to its left for the one year forwards, column H, to help you make comparisons. The graph immediately next to this table shows both forward curves in addition to the par curve and the zero coupon curve. The par and zero coupon curves are the two lowest curves appearing with a small purple square as you can see for the zero coupon curve and the diamonds in light blue for the par curve and then the one-year and two-year forward curves are the ones with the bump at the top but where we see the one-year forward curve being even more abrupt and less smooth than the two-year forward curve the greater smoothness of the two-year forward curve is essentially due to the greater averaging if you like that takes place when considering rates over a two-year period rather than just over one year. All that is left for us to do in this chapter is to examine the relative positions of the various curves when the par curve is flat or inverted as we did before. This worksheet flat to shows the par zero coupon and one year forward curves when starting with a flat par curve revealing fairly obviously that in this very unusual circumstance all rates and all curves lie exactly at the same level in the same exact position. There is no need to graph these given how simple this pattern is.
This worksheet, labeled Inverted 2, is the more interesting one, and reveals not only that when the par curve is inverted, the zero coupon curve lies underneath the par curve, and the forward curve lies underneath both of those, but also that at least for this particular shape of par curve, each curve after is steeper than the one immediately above it, with the forward curve by far the steepest. The graph immediately to the right confirms clearly this pattern the forward curve here being the green curve with the triangles in it. Inverted curves can be a little tricky if you are not careful with them. Consider, for example, the inverted par curve appearing in this table, which may at first seem exaggerated, but presumably is not impossible. We invite you to go ahead and input the data for this par curve into the appropriate column of worksheet inverted 2. Rather than tamper with worksheet inverted to, we have gone ahead and designed this new worksheet inverted 3, in which the par curve provided to you earlier has indeed now been inserted in column C. Note, among other things, the change now to the price of the one-year discount security obviously since a 9% yield would no longer be consistent with the 95% price we had previously. With regard to the forward curve, all seems fine at first, and the various curves again appear gradually steeper as we move from the par curve to the zero coupon curve to the forward curve, but we suddenly notice this value minus 0.54% for the 9-year forward 1-year rate in cell H17. What are we to make of this number? This is a not an easy question to answer, and it may be worth a few minutes of your time to consider it carefully. Click pause until you are ready to hear the answer. There is nothing wrong with the worksheet, in case you were wondering, nor are we about to suggest to you that we were wrong at the beginning of this module when we asked you to assume that nominal interest rates should always be positive. But the problem arose with the choice of par curve in the first place, and specifically with the last two entries at the bottom. In short, a nine-year bond with an annual coupon of 5%, and the 10-year bond with an annual coupon of 4.5% and both trading at par are inconsistent with one another. Put another way, you would always earn a higher all-in return over 10 years with the shorter 9-year instrument given its higher coupon irrespective of what 
the one-year reinvestment rate in nine years turned out to be. In a worst case, even if you assume this rate turns out to be zero, the additional 50 basis points you have earned annually under the nine-year instrument versus the ten-year instrument, even if again you assume in a worst case those extra 50 basis points were reinvested at zero, would have aggregated by the end of year nine a total of 4.5 percent. So already your wealth under the nine-year note would be greater than it would become under the 10-year note a year later, irrespective we emphasize again of what rates are today or what they have been since day one. The lesson here is that not all par curves are possible. Given the coupon on any given note, the coupon on the note, one year longer, cannot be smaller than the preceding coupon by more than a certain amount. If it is, the longer instrument becomes inferior to the shorter one under all possible interest rate scenarios and would presumably find no buyers.